trouble yourself not with the cost of this crusade. Its noble end affords you broad tolerance in your choice of means. Yeah, because we all know nothing bad ever happened as a consequence of the ends justifying the means. Hello everyone, Science Viking here, and it is time to return to Darkest Dungeon. Got some gold to spend on upgrading some folks. Though it looks like I'll be out of gold very soon. And lo and behold, I'm basically out of gold. Well, I have a gentle tide, so I should go to the uh, cove. Now, this might be a good opportunity to take on the final form of the Syrah. What would be a good team composition for that? Let's see. I should definitely bring a Vestal. Who else? Actually, between this not being the hardest boss in the world and the presence of a uh, and the presence of a gentle tide, I should, if possible, bring people who can gain experience. Let's see. Let's bring a leper, a hellion, and an abomination. Yeah, the Abomination isn't the best choice, but I think he's viable. The main issue is if I move him forward, the Leper will have trouble attacking. Um, but, if I trade if it bleeds for Breakthrough... Er, no, nah, I'll just have to I'll just have to keep the Abomination in human form. It's not ideal, but it should work. Also, actually, during the boss fight, because the, um, because the, uh, siren keeps someone mind-controlled most of the time, we'll effectively only have three people, which means it would actually be very easy for the Abomination to be in position two, unless it's controlling the vessel. Equip sorts and ancestor scroll and, uh... A worry stuff. Alright, so why would a rat carcass make you immune to death from the uh, Crimson Curse? Osmond Chains and the Shameful Shroud. Yeah, I'm going with the uh, Abomination's full equipment set. Now, this gives him plus 20% damage if he's in position 1, which he usually won't be, but that may change sometimes. And the Leper, as usual, gets the Warrior's Cap and the Warrior's Bracer. And the Hellion gets the Lioness Warpaint, and I think I'll also give her a Warrior's Bracer. Just boost her damage as much as I can. Okay, I'm sure the Leper has the right abilities equipped. He does. Okay, I think this is viable. Let's see if I get away with this. Some shovels. Just basically the usual stuff. Because of the Crimson Court, there's a decent risk of encountering enemies that can inflict blight. Don't need that many keys. Holy water and torches. Plenty of torches. Okay, let's find out what exactly the ancestor did to this poor woman. Under the blood moon, I lured my wide eyed prey to the pier's edge. Before she could properly appreciate her position, I clamped on a manacle, chaining her to the leering idol. A small push was sufficient to send both into the icy waters. And when at length the tide receded, jewels of the most magnificent grandeur lay scattered upon the shore. Yeah, you guys remember? You guys hear all of that? To any of my heroes with the kleptomania quirk, that could be you. Don't forget that. I always wondered what became of the unfortunate little whiff. Okay, this is a bit of an unfortunate map layout for a boss run. I'd say most likely that she's 
either here or here, but there's no good way to know which. So I'm just gonna have to explore. Carelessness will find no clemency in this place. Oh come on, we all we know that's not true. I mean you've seen how careless I am. I keep getting away with it somehow. Okay, I have a plan. The plan is I'm gonna take out the ghoul first, because the ghoul is the more fragile of the two enemies. I mean the leper can only target the savage, but otherwise I think I can take out the ghoul first. And, okay, three-fourths of the, yeah, three-fourths of the team has horror. Fortunately, we resisted arterial pinch. And the, the abomination may as well just attack both. Alright, what's, okay, 90% stun resistance, 140% base stun chance, so. I love being high level. I love the fact that 90% stun resistance still gives, is not enough to reliably prevent you from being stunned. That's just oddly satisfying. Like, it illustrates how well trained these heroes are, I guess. Oops. Whoa. Okay, that does it. That's the end of the ghoul. Now we just need to deal with the savage. And your that Mako is not off to a good start with that ghoul. Right. Again, no point in doing anything other than beast vile with the abomination, especially with the elevated stun resistances. Monstrous size has no intrinsic merit. Which Unless is likely to do more damage. We can hack or considered a virtue. Well, the 100% base bleed resistance is a sign that I should go for Wicked Hack. Chop. Well, that's the end of the stun resistance buff. Which means I can stun again. And it worked again! <laughs> All right, it has 30 and it's blighted for 15. Wait, it, it has 31, it's blighted for 15, and it's stunned. We need to inflict one damage, and then we're done. I'll let the hell you do the honors, or not. I'll let the Vestal do the honors, and it gets to be her turn again. I may as well use judgment so you also I I got too clever for my own good and now the game is punishing me. That's what's going on here. Okay, the pack, there we go. And now it dies on its next turn. Wait. Oh, five of the fifteen damage wore off, so I actually needed all six of the points of damage to hell you. Like I said, I got too clever for my own good. The turning point. Oh, I got some of the blood, but I'm not keeping it. Blood is less valuable than gold right now. Maybe when more of my heroes have the curse, but, well, there isn't enough, uh... The light, the promise of there safety. There isn't enough, um... Okay, now I know whether or not this is the boss room, and it is! <laughs> Welcome to the shortest boss run ever. I will probably, depending on the status of the team after we've killed the boss, I may continue exploring. In Radiance, may we find victory. The other question is, is it worth it to even make camp yet, or should I save that to get rid of stress after the boss fight? Um... Well, the only the only buffing ability I have is reflection because this I forgot to learn sharpen spear with this hellion, so all I could do is increase the leper's accuracy and critical rate. Well, that is valuable. That's not enough to justify making camp when the stress levels are this low. So, one more, one more, yeah, one more hallway battle. Not a big deal at all. Well, we did surprise the collector. Light up a torch. Manacles. Manacles does a lot of damage. We can hack. Since he's surprised, I have plenty of opportunity. I have ample opportunity to stun him. 
Unfortunately, this team has something for every position. Okay, now we find out if we're faster than him. Some of us are. Okay, um, well, there's no point in using anything other than manacles because it's the only thing that can hit him. And Wicked Hack. <laughs> and he's down to a little... He's down to less than a third of his maximum health before he got to do anything. It's not quite as much fun as when I managed to actually kill him before he did anything, but it's close. Okay, and let's see if I can finish off the highway with the gun. Continually onslaught. Perfect. Destroy. Of course, he could them. use Collect Call again, but I can hit him with... If he does, I can hit him with Iron Swan. Honestly, Life Steal is a lot worse, though the fact that it missed is welcome. Okay. In the interest of keeping him using Life Steal again, I'm going for another stun. Get rid of the other highwaymen. I don't need the damage that they can put out right before a boss fight. And he went for Head Knocker instead of Head Games. That is good. Alright, Wicked Hat. And Montgomery's first miss of the episode. You can hear the surprise disappointment in my voice as I announce that. Again going for head knocker. I mean, 12 damage from what's effectively Rampart is a lot, but still it's manageable. Okay, one more. And of course he uses... Okay, he uses Collect Call, but the, le the, the Leper, yes, Conter the Leper, the Vestal still has a turn and can reposition forward judge. As the ghoulish so, collection. there we go. The rats prepare to feast. Okay. That's him taken care of. Um, yeah, drop the anti-venom for that. I should have dropped the holy water in hindsight. But a victory nonetheless. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. The holy water goes now. Okay, so we just finished one boss. Now let's take on another one. Here we go. The aquatic devils have remade okay, she the is tanky. In their image. She is their queen right. and their slave. And evasive too. Alright. 100% stun resistance. Actually not that high. 100% is actually not that high. I have a decent chance to stun. Still reach her with chop. Unfortunately, her ability to heal herself is somewhat limited. Okay, go for healing for now. I brought plenty of bandages. Stick with Wicked Hack. Unfortunately, this is going to be a slow process. <laughs> you know, there are advantages to having her be able to capture heroes that have self-healing abilities. Because they'll, they'll just heal themselves instead of attacking me, and them healing themselves is good for me anyway, because I want them to survive. It's a bulwark, not a shaman, so I don't need to worry about it as much. Let's see if I can stun her. I can't. Well, I would need to hit first. I can't use slam in position four, so I might as well move it forward. And again, use a Song of Desire on a hero that I don't want to, uh... Oh, great. See, that's the thing I was hoping wouldn't happen. Well, I can outdamage the healing, at least. The problem is I need to outdamage the healing, and then I need to go back to out-healing the damage. Because, well, the Siren doesn't put out a lot of damage, with how durable she is, she doesn't need to put out a lot of damage. I'm actually going to go with Beast of Vile because it's the best way to get around the high protection of the Guardian. Because I don't have the Grave Robber. Fortunately, the Siren does not seem to have much accuracy. How quickly the tide Unfortunately, my captured Vestal does have much accuracy. Okay. This is going to be a tough one. I have a plan. Protection wears off one. The protection wears off next round. Why not just use Adrenaline Rush? And Solemnity. Because I need the healing anyway. Alright. 
And again, Song of Desire on the Abomination. Okay, that ain't good. Now she's in position four. Okay, this is... This is a bit... This is going a bit pear-shaped. Please don't stun. Please don't stun. Please don't stun. Thank you. Is that gonna... Um... The guarded status is still not... That's confusing. I thought that when it meant one round, it meant that at the end of the round when I checked, it would be over, but apparently the guarded status hasn't ended yet. I'll just use Adrenaline Rush again. Um, oh, that that's what it was. It, it wears off based on the action of the person who granted it, so now that the champion has taken an action, now it a momentary abatement. After it's too late. Fortunately, Pressure Crash does not have very good accuracy. Please use absolute okay, manacles. That's not good. Alright. But I can finally use Iron Swan for no damage because it didn't hit. This is just, this is just the episode of disappointment so far. It's very, this episode is all about various flavors of disappointment. And pain, but this is Darkest Dungeon. Every episode is about pain. It's just sometimes we're inflicting the pain. As well move forward one. And wicked hack. That is some good wicked hack damage. But this is the thing. The si that's the thing about the siren. She's very good at stall. Divine Grace. To remove the champion so that I can the reach enemy the, uh, so that when the corpse wears off, I can reach the siren. And... Yeah, it's time to transform. And I can reach position... Oh, yeah, I can reach position three with rage. Summons a minion. It's a... Okay, it still isn't something with healing. That's good. And, again, the captured hero uses a healing ability. Thank you. Thank you, AI Roulette. This has been incredibly helpful. Not only that, but it's critical healing on the hero that belongs to me. Alright, I'm gonna try to dazzle the siren again. I'm, going, I'm gambling on that 40% stun chance. Not much for the leopard to do other than chop. Which matters very little. But... The Siren is still in position to be hit by Rage. It's not 50 this time, but it's still a lot. For now, I'm actually just going to have the Hellion continue buffing. Because what the Hellion does depends on who the Siren takes and what the team positioning ends up being. Alright, dazzle the Siren again. And we got the stun, which means she can't attack this round. And she's stuck in position occupying positions two and three where everyone except the Hellion can wail on. Let's finish this off in style, shall we? Let's go for Rage. Like I said, episode this episode's theme is disappointment. And then she mind controls the abomination. Okay, let's see if we can hit her with shock. There we go. Completely anticlimactic, but we all get to live. That's good enough. I dropped a stack of uh, deeds for the blueprint and a stack of crests for the bullseye bandana. However, we're going to continue adventuring for a little while. Get ready back into formation because we're in okay shape. That's feast. Gathered close in tenuous firelight and uneasy companionship. Sanctuary. And. Yeah, there shouldn't be any... We've already taken on both the boss and the collector, so there shouldn't be any really dangerous battles. So let's re let's go with Rebel. Let's all get drunk to celebrate our victory.
And then... I'm also going to have the best of use prey to reduce everybody's stress a bit further. And who has the most stress still? The Vestal, the Hellion does, so I'll just encourage. Okay. No nighttime ambushes. Nice reduction of the, the stress levels. As the light purchase, spirits are lifted. Let's explore a little and bit purpose more. Purpose is we made clear. Here. See if we can find a bit more loot. Still, that went surprisingly well, just because of how tanky, in spite of how tanky the, uh, the siren is. Honestly, fully out over here is the MVP. That critical rage, and then just the two regular rages were that that really put us over the top. He took out like the second half of the siren's hit points over the course of about two, a little more than two rounds. But that's. That's the challenge with the- that's the thing about the Siren. She doesn't do a lot of damage, but she's extremely tanky because of her high hit points and all of her stall tactics. And so the challenge of dealing with her is it's just this grind, this endurance match. This is also really an ab- let's think about it. This is an abnormally small map for, um, a boss run. Like, it feels like they accidentally Ancient grabbed the map from a short-length mission and gave it to this boss. Thirsting for blood. Okay, and we have scouting, so I can find out what's over here. And the answer is nothing worth getting. Let's find out what the curio is, because it'll only really require a little backtracking to retrieve Torch beyond measure. And I may discover that there was absolutely no reason to continue exploring after defeating the boss. I mean, there's four rooms left we haven't been to yet, and it's entirely possible they contain nothing of particularly, particular lur 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 importance. Okay, this is gonna be interesting. Should go if it bleeds on the piranha and miss. No real obvious use of the Hellion, so I'm gonna go for another stun. And another miss. And a third miss! <laughs> Though it's the leper, so it's really what we expect. And... Um... Well, let's do with Beast Vile. Since it hits two targets, it's more likely to hit at least one of them. And he hit both! Somebody had to beat the odds, I guess. Alright, the Shaman is still in stealth for a little while. So Beast Vile shouldn't have too much injury. trouble taking care of at least the Stinger and probably also the Piranha. So honestly, I think the Hellion and the Leper should just concentrate on the Maggot. Because we do also have the... I think part of the problem is we're all drunk right now. Well, actually it's more accurate to say we're all hungover right now. Though, I don't know, the fact that they have reduced stress suggests that they're actually still drunk. Like, you think if they're hungover, their stress levels would increase faster. So, but they have a stress reduction buff. So actually, yes, we got so drunk last night that it's the following morning and we're still drunk, apparently. Alright, we'll Ooh, wicked crit! Executed. And wicked chop. Formation is broken. And that's the end of the match. Maintain the offensive. Alright, give up a piece of file. And you would use the enemies. If it bleeds the, the shaman and just barely not finish it off. Okay, judgment. As the fiend falls, a faint hope blossoms. Judgment, the ability for when the Vestal is tired of waiting for Decimated. her teammates to kill the enemy. She's a bandage and absolution. Ooh, critical absolution. The god of dubstep is pleased. Great is the weapon that cuts on its own. Okay, 
before much longer, we should just get out of here. I'm already kind of undoing the benefits of resting, so of resting after we completed the mission. Still, I have a hunch there's something of value over here that we're finding. The way is lit. The path is clear. We require only the strength to follow it. Um, let's use medicinal herbs on this. And I was hoping it would remove a different quirk. I was hoping it would remove compulsive rather than witness, but, well, I'm still calling this a win, because I need to spin this somehow to make it look like it's worth doing. Alright, we found an heirloom chest, and frankly, if we don't get scouting in this mission that confirms that there's other stuff we can find, I'm gonna get us out of here after this mission. Okay. A couple of hits of Beast Vile will deal with the uh, piranhas in the midline. Well, neither the Hellion nor the Leper is particularly well suited to deal with the Champion, especially when the Leper is in position 3 now. I'm just gonna have to have them handle it. And the Vestal keeps everyone from keeling over. Sedated. Just have him move. Yeah, let's have him move forward one. He can't even use Solemnity in position. Wow, the Leper is just useless. I can see why a lot of people don't like using the Leper class, honestly, considering how restricted he is in terms of positioning. It's not, I will say it is nice to have a class that is as tanky as the Leper is that can also heal himself. But, at the same time, he is a little hard to use because of how limited he is in terms of where he needs to be in the, uh, on the field in order to do his stuff. Right. Wicked miss. Yeah, no surprise, he's still drunk, apparently. Utterly meaningless barnacle barrier, but it does increase the protection. And Hugh, so... And Hugh, so that I can miss twice as much in one attack! Pretty soon the champion is going to be all that's left because somehow he's incredibly evasive. Okay, we finally managed to hit him for a cool 8 damage. Just have the Vestal stick with healing to repair the consequences of my bad decisions. And Makel still hasn't hasn't decided to join the party when it comes to actually hitting the enemy. We'll get the champion eventually. Take a beast spy on the tide master. See if we can get him nice and light. Unforeseen. Unforgiving. And for now I'm just gonna stick with healing with the vessel. And chop, because the thing is, I don't want the champion to stick around for too long after we've defeated everyone else, because that could cause, um... Because that could cause, uh, singular strike reinforcements to show up. And you know what? New plan. It's time to transform. Because... The Leper is actually less accurate than the Transformed Abomination, so I'm just gonna let the Abomination handle the champion. The Leper can just wait in the back and do nothing. Yeah, just use Revenge. And I'm gonna go with Break. Because it's enough Even to kill the shaman. Water. There we go. These nightmarish creatures can be felt. The they can be beaten. Drop the medicinal herbs to grab. Drop. Oh, I'm holding control and not shift. That's why that isn't working. Drop the medicinal herbs. Use the key. Get utter dis. Find utter disappointment in a box. Like I said, this is just the ep the theme of this episode so far is disappointment. Okay, let's just go home before we get disappointed further. Though, we managed to complete a boss fight without any fatalities. That, at least, is good. 
We've got the Siren's Conch, which is at least somewhat useful. The minus 20% stress is actually pretty good. And everyone in this team is now champion level. And everyone in this team has gained a negative, uh, a negative quirk. And the Abomination has somehow managed to gain syphilis from this experience. Um, is there something you need to tell me, Foliot? I promise I won't judge you, uh, too much. Curiosity, I only judge you a little bit. Interest and obsession. The My lights. Is on my road to damnation. Plus 100% shards collected this week. Okay, I think we should visit the, uh... I think we should visit the farmstead. Uh, start by making sure that my, uh... High-level people are fully upgraded. Because I'm not sending anyone who isn't champion level into the, uh... Farmstead. Okay, let's look at equipment. Unfortunately, I don't have a champion level jester to provide stress management. I do have Rosai, who could learn Cry Havoc. I see something about him. Wait, that's, that's still the blacksmith. I meant to click on the guild. And... Okay, that's manageable. So, let's take advantage of this event and visit the farmstead. Rosai needs to be in position three because I need access to target. I need access to uh, cry havoc. Um, Stafford in position four, so that he has access to, so that he's he can be the main healer. And let's bring Petromal in position two, and then anyone who's a good frontliner that would be Valange. So yep, I'm going for a mark exploitation team again. Because I love them so. Alright. And Stafford gets a, the scroll, but instead of a worry stone, I'm giving him the conch. That plus 50% debuff resistance, and more importantly, minus 20% stress to uh, actually drive the, his total stress modifier to be negative. Alright. Now, for the Houndmaster, he absolutely needs the Steady Bracer. Otherwise, let's see, his class-specific trinkets are useless in this situation, so... Let me see. Well, I may as well give him a Worry Stone, considering how much stress is the problem here. Highwayman gets the flash fire gunpowder, also for a damage boost, and you know what? I may as well also give him a worry stone. And the Hellion gets the Hellion Special, which is the Warrior's Bracer and the uh, Lioness Warpaint. It'd be real nice if I had the other of the um, Hellion specific, the Crimson Court Hellion specific trinkets. But that is not to be at the moment. Okay, let's... Okay, so my current record is 38 foes reef. Let's see if I can beat that. Alright, I can't bring torches. There is a reason to bring food. But there isn't a reason to bring a lot of food. I don't know if there's a reason to bring shovels. But there is a reason to bring both bandages and anti-venom. And I'm going to bring a key or two and some holy water. Just on a hunch that I might have a use for them. Okay. Let us embark upon this journey. The poor Miller. Right, the victim. The seasons took his livelihood. I took his land. And now, uncountable years later, the comet has taken his humanity. 
My only regret is that I did not live to see that shoddy mill smashed to pieces by the miraculous bounty I reaped from beyond the void. So I guess it repeats that intro every time you do this quest. Okay. And reach the barrier. I forgot to bring blood because I didn't realize that Valange has the Crimson Curse, and not only that, but she's craving. I may have already doomed this mission. Wonderful. Yeah, I always manage to fail somehow. Alright. So an Iron Swan, because it can do that. And pistol shot won't finish the job. Grape shot blast won't reach position four, but Hound's Rush probably also won't finish the job. So I'll use pistol shot just to get us start. And can Demon's Pull get the kill though? There's a small chance. But no. Here, remember previous comments about carelessness and find and the clemency thereof. Disadvantage. Okay, no that's quarter. one of them done. That's one of the 39 that I'm aiming for. Alright, since you're the first one to get a turn, I'll just quick attack on the aberration. With impunity. Alright. The vulnerability hex on the one that doesn't have repost, and we'll just have it fail. Because of course it failed. Let me see something. Let's try a grape shot blast won't kill any of them, but it will hit all of them. And it'll bring all of them into one shot range. This is also, you know, the farmstead really gives the damage over time area between ceaseless labor and sow the seeds. Alright, anti venom. And I'm actually going to go for Cry Havoc, because everybody can use a little bit of stress relief right now. And everybody got a little bit of stress relief. Alright, Iron Swan this one, and miss! Alright, great shot blast to bring the last one into one shot. Range. In hindsight, I probably should have just finished one of them off. Though I suppose there's an argument to be made for finishing several of them off in one shot. Anti venom and weird reconstruction. Not doing as much as I hope, but doing plenty. Alright, Hound's Rush on the one with the Okay, we finally sword. managed to kill something. Destroy them. That's our that's all. only our second kill. Speed of Madness is 7 hit points, so I can't kill it with, uh, Demon's Pull. I can kill it with Iron Swan. Back to the pit. Does every attack the enemies have inflict stress? No, not all of them, just a lot of them. And... Already, already, because I brought someone who had high stress on this mission that has stress as a major threat, we already have a resolve check and Rosai is hopeless. No hope in Wonderful. No uh, hope at all. Well, let's get a nice tasty critical and get rid of two out of three in one shot. Alright. And now he's stressing everyone else out. Let's see if he can fix that. Replace your divot, Rosai. Stars are not right. Yeah, I'd say the star. Yeah, there's something definitely very not right about the stars. The fact they're on the ground is one indication of that. Alright. Vulnerability X. That's actually setting up for next turn. Well, sort of. Okay, great shot to get the one with the post out of the way. A faint hope blossoms. They are really concentrating on the Houndmaster. They really want him to have a heart attack. Many hands. What does that do? Oh, it's just a buff. Uh, speed and protection. That could be worse, at least. Alright, anti venom and hounds rush. Though it still won't be enough to get the kill. 
one more Hound's Rush will get rid of the form. Okay, well, I guess I can't heal the Hound Master. I guess I'll heal the uh, Highwayman instead. Right. Iron Swan will be able to do Confidence the surges as the Bringing enemy us up crumbles. to six kills. And Grape Shot Blast is almost guaranteed to get rid of the Aberration. There's a chance Another of getting rid falls. of the others. Of course, it has to hit the others in order to get rid of them. Hounds Rush, yeah, I'll do more damage on the one without the protection buff. Yep, and reinforcements, because there's always reinforcements. They don't call this mission endless for nothing. Alright, can Iron Swan get the kill? Yes, it can. Their formation is broken. Maintain the offensive. Three shot blast because of the one guaranteed kill and the two that it'll bring down the one shot range. Seven to thirteen. Hounds Rush cannot get the kill on either of these, so I may as well just use Cry Havoc. I mean, Cry Havoc being my only stress ability is a bit of a problem here. Right, Iron Swan, this be gone, fiend. And again, Grape Shot Blast will get rid of the other aberration because it will almost. A well, there's always a small chance that it fails to get rid of the aberration. Please let one of my heroes get a turn before the aberration does. And our second resolve check before the end of the first wave, Be and it, that one is also an affliction. Okay, the good news is Stafford does get an action, which means you can use the vulnerability hex to get rid of the aberration. That's good. And, okay, he acted without my control, but he at least did something helpful. That's, again, it could be a lot, the afflictions could be causing much larger problems than they are, which having said that, they will now start causing larger problems, because that's just how this works. There's nothing I, I... Okay, I actually have an idea. Vulnerability has to be Reducing his dodge would help if it had worked. I have two different reasons to want to use Grape Shot Blast, because I can also use it to hit the Scarecrow, who's probably still in stealth. In addition to getting rid of the guy in position one. May as well use anti-venom. And Hound's Rush has a small chance to one-shot. I'm just gonna ignore this farmhand. He will bleed to death. Or weakening curse means he bleeds to death next turn and doesn't get to take one last action. I could do that. Alright, grape shot the rest of these guys. Another abomination cleansed from our lands. And I may as well use the <laughs> I guess Valange is getting impatient now. Okay, that leaves just the Scarecrow as the threat. Unfortunately, the Scarecrow is actually a fairly meaningful threat, even if his stealth is gone. Unforeseen. Unforgiving. I mean the dodge value of 35 is a significant factor there. Okay, our first opportunity Battle to behind. rest. Battle ahead. But for a moment, peace. Take up the hatchet, blow off some steam. How do I hit that with a shovel? Nothing. Destruction. Whoa! Destruction that reduced his stress level by a hundred. That is incredibly helpful. <laughs> going to charge at us, and I don't have any, well, and it's in stealth, so there's nothing I can do about that. Alright. I have a small chance to one-shot the Herald. And I dodged the counterattack. Alright. Um, I'm sure you go with vulnerability next to the farm hand, because of what I'm about to do. The marking will matter. 
Reality bed. I don't know what that does, but I'm glad it failed. Okay, grave shot the hero. Grave shot to get rid of the hero well. while also hitting the flower wars. For a lot, too! Okay, pause from labor. Can I one shot with Hound's Rush? Small chance, but yes. Obliterated. Higher chance if I get a critical. Trample, which I believe negates the stealth status, but it also shuffles us very badly. Right. I can still use Hound's Rush in position one. Let's go for vulnerability X to get rid of this thing fast. Right. Elliot is gonna have to move forward over the course of a couple of turns. But now we're at least close to being in formation. For some reason I thought I could use Hound's The reason why I marked the target is because for some reason I thought I could use Hound's Rush when I was in position one. But apparently I can't. Um, let's see. You can have the uh, occultist. I almost called him the Abomination. I'm sure there are some people who would say that Stafford is an Abomination. Alright, can I kill with Wicked Hack? Yes, but I actually have a pretty good chance of killing the farm handle. Attack, which will deprive him of the opportunity to get a counterattack. He steals screen. I've never seen that one before. It does what I would expect it to do. Damage and stress. No trespasses. Okay, that didn't that doesn't even have a chance to stun. <laughs> without e without me even asking, he did exactly what I wanted him to do. Good work, Rosai. Alright. Here reconstruction, get a pretty respectable healing number on it, even if it does cause bleeding. And now we just hack the form into that. Get hack, open vein, that kind of stuff. Okay, I'm in good shape for bandages at least. Alright. And it, and may as well go for cry havoc. If I can get Rosai's stress level down to zero, I can remove one of the afflictions. Let me see something. Do I want to go for... Yes, I have a plan. Let's go for... If it bleeds on this farmhand, it won't kill, but I don't need it to. But, I believe... Okay, I can't kill the Herald. I also can't kill the Foreman. I have a small chance of killing just the farmhand, but the but he missed the farmhand, so that was just a bad plan all around. I overestimated the damage of Grape Shot Blast there. Sticking with weird reconstruction for the occultist. Sticking with Cry oh, well I would have been sticking with Cry Havoc if he hadn't chosen to pass his turn. Such a terrible assault. And of course Reality Ben managed to connect and completely undid all the progress I made on trying to get him uh, de-afflicted. Okay. Stick with weird reconstruction. Ooh, big weird reconstruction. Many hands does not heal. That's the main thing I'm worried about, is healing. I should be worried more about stress. Alright, Grape Shot Blast. And two out of three dead this time. One more solid hit and I'm rid of the Herald. The Heralds are the real problem here. And I can't use, uh... I don't have any more anti so I'm just gonna have to power through this. Okay, two more Seeds of Madness, but they'll be easy enough to get rid of with Grape Shot Blast. Which means we just need to focus on the Farmhand. We're already up to 19 kills. Alright, two Seeds, because the Farmhand... Regardless of what he appears to be made of, the Farmhand does in fact bleed. And now I'm just gambling the Petromol gets an action before these things explode. And that is a gamble that pays off. Most of them haven't, but that one did. And Hound's Rush to bring us up to 20 kills. 
Okay, 19 more kills. We're past the halfway point to have beaten our previous record. And that's not getting into the fact that, uh... Okay, vulnerability hex on this farm. That's not getting into the fact that we received double, uh, shards for this week. We can hack on this one. Eradicated. So... The other three need to combo together to take out a farmhand, but Valange can just take one out by herself, despite be having the Crimson Curse and being craven. Okay, that was that was rather unhelpful. Ow. Injury. Palpable. Yeah, the, the repositioning is actually more pro more of a problem than the damage. Um. Let's just get the hell use adrenaline rush this time. And let someone else move to get her into position. Because the uh, cultist can move back too. Alright. And grape shot blast to just barely fail to get rid of the uh Okay, now <laughs> and now we have the DLCs interacting with each other. The Crimson Curse isn't letting uh, the Houndmaster trade positions with the Hellion. Now we have a different DLC creating problems, because that's what every aspect of this game exists for, is to make things harder. Okay, um, screw it. We can incur the finish off the farmhand. Let's at least pump our kill numbers up a little bit. And open vein on the horse, and miss. Things are starting. Things are starting to go a bit pear-shaped, more so than they already were. Right, I can move the Hellion forward on her turn, at least. And not much point in doing anything other than Hound Rush right now. That plus open vein might be enough to get rid of the farmhand. And despite being us being hit by trample, Rosai is somehow still not at death's door. <laughs> Not only that, it knocked us into formation. The shuffle actually knocked us into exactly the formation I was trying to get us into. Thank you, Plow Horse. You just saved us all. I'm sure you didn't mean to. Right. Some big healing. Big healing. And get rid of the farm, man. With the critical, so I don't need to deal with the crystalline aberration. Unfortunately, this aberration, yeah, there it goes. I can't stop this one. Fortunately, everybody except Broside knows when to duck. And another Sleeper's Dream. And this time we don't even get any action before Beyond Time and Space happens. Curiosities. Begging for examination. Fully heals everyone. That is good. Unfortunately, the stress levels are a bit high. Colors all. You tread beyond the reach of reality. And it opens up a stress wave, though it is on the person with the least stress, but that doesn't matter, he's he's having a resolve check anyway. And he's paranoid. Okay, that's three afflictions. The walls close in. The shadows whisper of conspiracy. Wicked Hack is very likely to one-shot if it hits the uh, stinger. So I'm gonna try it. Destroyed. And now for our final resolve check. And the Hellion is masochistic, which might actually Those be helpful considering the, uh, at the lion is no short supply. Alright, vulnerability hex so I can get rid of this piranha, and it doesn't matter because it has to. And spear fishing, because they're all about those move abilities, though this one isn't that bad. Alright, I can still reach the piranha with pistol shot. I can't hit him with it, but I can reach him with it. And Hound's Rush. Round quakes. Quarry Falters. I will say the music also does a lot to contribute to the kind of oppressive atmosphere of this whole area. 
go for Wicked Hack on the Piranha. Can I use Grape Shot Glass? I can't from this position, so I'm just going to have to shoot the Aberration with a normal shot. And... There's really not a lot the Occultist can do. Let's just go with Weakness Curse on somebody, because why not? I'm actually going to move the Houndmaster back too. Gambling with the Occultist goes before the Highway does. Or that that happens. That could also work. And I was about to say that I was going to use Iron Swan in the hopes of preventing Sea Breeze, and then he used Sea Breeze before the Hellion got a turn, so no use preventing it. Well, let's use Iron Swan anyway. Still need one more hit to completely get rid of the piranha, but I can probably use Hound's Rush for that. And you, you said blast? Well, let's do a grape shot blast. Impressive. Okay, there goes the shaman. We're up to 25 kills. And heal the Hellion, or perhaps not. Um. Well, that does increase her damage. Okay, let's go for another blast of the grape shot for a blast it had the miss. Enemy's evasion isn't even increased. Okay, well this at least is gonna heavily boost the damage of Wicked Hat so that it can executed. do that! And now we have a mortality debuff to contend with in addition to all of the other problems. Facing the abyss. Please don't kill. Okay, thank you. I can breathe again. Alright, Hound's Rush on the one with more hit points, and it's still gone. Okay, we don't need to deal with Crystalline Aberrations anymore. Though we, very, we absolutely are fools to press on. And of course the enemy gets critical healing. What can I do that has a chance of success? Pistol shotting the piranha. What I need is for the Hellion to get a turn so that I can use um, Adrenaline Rush to get her off of Death's Door. Critical health but not at Death's Door is a lot better. In hindsight, I probably should have brought the Martyr Seal alongside the... Uh, what's it called? Alongside the Lioness Warpaint. One more grape shot blast will rid us of the piranha. And I am gonna go for the healing on the heli. And apparently the game just does not want to cooperate with me healing the heli. Call of the deep, I need to get rid of that piranha now. Still going for wicked hack, wicked miss on the savage. Please don't miss with grape shot blast. I said please, and he did it anyway. Damn it! Well, I can still use Hound's Rush. Let's go for the. Okay, the Piranha is finally gone. Unfortunately, in Uea Savage, when the entire team is both low on health and has. Um... Oh, I guess the Seeds of Madness do still happen. And is afflicted. This is not good. We are dangerous at the best of times. This is not going to be a new record for us. We'll start blast to get rid of the shard. If it bleeds, we'll get rid of the uh, tide monster. That, at the very least, all we have to deal with is the savage. Unfortunately, by himself, the savage is a lot. Now, the true test. Hold fast, or expire. All right, target whistle on the savage. You have got to be kidding me. There, there's no other explanation. You are at, you have got to be fucking with me. Two Uea Savages at the same time. Injury and despondence. Alright, going for Adrenaline Rush to get Melanes off of Death's Door. 
Please survive. Okay, you, know, you can't possibly Merge die to it. You also managed to resist oblivion. being stunned by it. Okay. Good work, Rosai. All right, dog treats. Target is already marked. Let's see how much damage we can do to the crusher. All right, weird reconstruction of the guy who's on death's door and about to have a heart attack because those two things can't be allowed to coexist. And Petromol is just kind of attached to the idea of using Grape Shot Blast and missing, so he decided to do it again. I'm going for his bleeds on the Crusher in the back, because I need it gone, and it has... I need at least one of them gone. This one has fewer hit points. It gets to be the target. There is one bit of good news in this situation, though, which is I'm fighting enemies that entirely lack stress skills. Of course, that doesn't guarantee that we don't experience stress. It's just that we experience significantly less of it. Grape shot blast should give us one of the seeds of madness, or not? As life ends, okay. Terrible vistas. Use a bandage, and I can get Melagnas off of Death's door and deal with the crystalline aberration at the same time by killing the aberration with Iron Swan. Death it is only a momentary the abatement, though. Lapse in concentration. Uh. Okay, who do I fix? Um, I'll heal the stunned person first. Okay, target whispers. One thing you can do while you're stuck in position one, and it is actually something that we need. Okay, unstable resonance and it failed. Oh, God. Um, wait a second. I have an idea. Um, I don't think I need to kill all of them. I just think I need to kill enough of them. Please don't kill. Please don't kill. Thank you. reconstruction on yourself because you will have a heart attack most probably before your next turn. Like, do I not do I actually need to destroy every enemy in this group or do I only need to destroy some of them? Okay, that's two death store chat. Oh no, he resisted the bleed. All right. I'm actually moving him back, even though that puts the occultist in position one. I know it's nuts, but I'm doing it anyway. All right, one more, one more open vein that missed because everything misses with me. Okay, I, I'm just gonna have to let the piranha bleed to death. He's almost there. I just need to let him bleed a little longer. All right. Okay, we're closer to being. We're in at least a semi-viable formation. Not exactly what I'd like it to be, but we're not all we're not going to die immediately because of how bad this formation is. We're only going to die eventually because of how bad this formation is. Okay, use another dog treat. And hit the savage with everything you've got. Which isn't very much. If it bleeds on the savage, perhaps I should have gone with Iron Swan. And now it's finally time to heal the Houndmaster! But it can be postponed. And since you can't reach anything else, you may as well start making the champion bleed. Also, I just commented that I should have used Iron Swan, having forgotten that I can only use Iron Swan if I'm in position one, with Val which Valange is not right now. For death by inches. You may as well just stick with Hound's Rush, even if it isn't going to do very much. And Open Vein, which is going to do even less because it doesn't hit at all. Right, bandage, if it bleeds, we'll do 9 to 17 with a small chance of bleeding versus 14 to 26 from Wicked Hack. Well or 36 if you get a critical. Okay, one more solid hit, which unfortunately the uh, Occultist is not capable of inflicting, so he's just going to have to continue with healing. Okay, and that assumes that any of the heroes will let him heal them, since they all have afflictions that make them not want to be healed. Okay, the savage no is done. We just have the, uh... Inordinate exsanguination be considered a virtue. Oh, great. Death's door with 199 stress. Thank you! I have never felt this Please relieved to be... Recover. 
but be quick. Okay, we're retreating. We can't make it any farther than this. I Last time it was 38, this time we only managed 32, but we need to get out of here. We will endure this loss and learn from it. Why is this considered a loss? We this is we even got quest rewards, 9,000 gold and 9 crests. This isn't going to be a new record, but the 25 comet shards is helpful. We even got resolve experience from it. And a whole bunch of negative quirks, too. And the Black Plague, just to add an extra problem on top of all the other problems. In time, you will know the tragic extent of my failings. Well, let's get some stress treatment going. And... Where's Vologna's? Yeah, she can go at the go to the bar to avoid the possibility of contamination. Okay. And we're broke, basically. So after the stress treatment, we're basically out of money. I did get more shards, which I can potentially trade for some pretty useful trinkets. I'd say the ones we can afford aren't really that impressive. But we need to go on another mission, and we specifically need to go on an anti- we need to bring an antiquarian on a mission. So, let's see, we're going to bring Gale. I clicked on Holland by accident. Tessel the antiquarian, and the question is who else to bring? Can an antiquarian handle herself in position two? Not really. Um, so I need, let's see, I'll bring a crusader and let's see, I shouldn't bring someone who's only resolved level two in addition to that. So let's bring a crusader and a leper to fill out the team. This should be viable. But yeah, we need, we need to loot, we need to collect some loot badly. The Vestal gets the scroll and the conch. The Antiquarian gets... Yeah, I'll get her the Master's Ashes and then the uh, Carapace Idol. Let's see, the Leper. Yeah, the Leper gets the Warrior's Cap and the Warrior's uh, Bracer. And everyone in my audience at this point can tell me exactly what the... Uh, Crusader gets. As for skills, yeah, I'd say that looks about right. Um, just make sure the leper should be in position one, though. Okay, let's go collect some antiques. I am actually really liking the benefits of having the. Uh, I'm really liking the benefits of having the uh, farm I don't remember what the name of the structure is but the one that gives you a little bit of food for free at the beginning of each mission that's actually done me a lot of good okay let's do this this is also in addition to getting some more gold because we're broke this is also an opportunity for some of the mid-level heroes to get some experience which is kind of good because we These need salt to soap uh, caverns are teeming with pelagic nightmares they must be flushed out. Because we need to uh, level up some people. <laughs> and another candidate for simplest map layout possible. 
It's a straight line. Just, well, I mean, it's a curvy line, but it's a line. And because they saw how I dealt with the UAS savages, they decided to give me an UAS crusher. Because no one else has a good way of doing so, I'm actually going to have the antiquarian focus on picking up the madman. I'm going to have a dazzle the crusher because I really don't want it to get to a chance to attack. Unfortunately, that didn't work. Uh, do I want to go for stunning blow? 130, yeah, 60% chance to stun. I may as well go for it. And it failed. Well, that's what happens when you take a risk. The game punishes you. And, our t and it's everyone's favorite attack, Arterial Pitch. Just a little pitch, it's not a big deal. As well as spamming Doomsay, which is an ability that can be dodged, apparently. Alright, let's keep trying to stun the pressure. Now. The light, the promise of safety. Festival of Ages. And an old friend smite for five damage. Yeah, Chop is doing a little better. Fortunately, we're not dealing with enemies with crazy high dodge anymore since this isn't a champion. Okay, one more hit and the antiquarian will have successfully taken out the sea breeze. Of course you used Sea Breeze. You would use Sea Breeze. It was inevitable that you were going to use Sea Breeze. <laughs> you were always going to use Sea Breeze. It's just what you do, because you exist to torment. All healing enemies do. I feel like, I feel like the motto of heal enemies that can heal is just, you mad, bro? You mad? The the beast, the greater the glory. Unfortunately, I have Purge. The, uh, the time- the Oracle is about to be in a lot of pain. And Judgment on the Madman. Okay, that rids us of him. And Smite on the Oracle. One more hit and we're done with the Oracle. Slowly. Gently. This is how a life is taken. There we go. And we already have a rare As antique. Victories mount, and so a giant oyster. Resistance. You know, with the exception of identifying traps, scouting is kind of meaningless here. Though it is still useful in identifying traps. Okay, we have a Thrall, and that's actually especially nice because the, um... The Crusader has, uh, because the Thrall is the only unholy enemy. No, it isn't. <laughs> I say the Thrall is the only unholy enemy that spawns in the cove while mousing over a ghoul, the other unholy enemy type that spawns in the cove. But, since Smite deals extra damage to Unholy, I can easily take out the Thrall with him. Now he's going to deal with the Maggot. Which, with its low Blight resistance, the Antiquarian should be able to handle in a couple of turns. And I may as well use Judgment on the Ghoul. Let Gale get some damage in. I really wonder what her kill count is. And smite. And 
and heal. Okay, While well, I'm Compassion saying everything that I do in a really dramatic voice. And stab. A victory. Perhaps the turning point. And solemnity. Ooh, critical solemnity. That's nice. The death by inches. What to drop? Drop the holy water for the minor antiques. I mean, it's only one so far, but there will always be more. And may as well get some healing for the one person who's injured. Wait, that's stress healing now somehow. I thought that I thought that indicator meant health healing, or does it? Is it like semi-random or something? Ah, oh, this composition. This is going to be tough to crack. One of the downsides of the team composition I brought is we're kind of bad at attacking the enemy's back. You can do it, but it's really just the Vestal and the Antiquarian who have to do that. So they're doing an okay job of getting rid of the Cultist Witch, or Enchantress, or whatever this particular variant is called. Annihilated. And, of course, he goes for Barnacle Barrier on the guy who's in stealth, no less, which is almost entirely meaningless. Yeah, this is kind of a refreshing change of pace compared to how brutal the farm scale was. Judgment. And chop. And now we just need to gradually chip away at the brick wall that is the uh, Pelagian Hall War. Because we have neither abilities that ignore protection nor abilities that reduce protection in this composition. And don't, less, he used he used Call of the Deep this time, but let us not forget that the Pelagi Oracle has Sea Breeze. The slow death, unforeseen, unforgiving. As well as keep wailing on the uh, tide man or the bulwark. Advantage. Grab a chop. We're actually chewing through his health not that slowly. Like, it's slow, but it's not quite as, like, soul-crushingly slow as I expected it to be. Just a little more and we're done with it. Alright, barring Sea Breeze, we've got it. And he went for Stress Wave. I've never been so relieved to watch my hero's stress levels increase. Well struck. You are damned. Also, that was actually a double critical. Because I believe the criti the chance of getting critical damage and critical healing from Judgment are calculated independently. So, Gale essentially just rolled a critical Great twice. Is the weapon that cuts on its own. And now he's reduced to using Ceremonial Cut, which is basically just the low-budget version of Sacrificial Stab. As the Fiend falls, a faint hope blossoms. Hold on to what we have for now. Though, this is roughly the half- this room is roughly the halfway point of the mission, and it's probably a good place to make camp. In Radiance, may we find victory. And, so, two crates in this hallway, they're both completely empty. Like I said, a theme of this episode is disappointment. So you have fortifying vapor now for a Whoa, that was better healing than I expected. Probably because of the trinket. I seriously underestimated the power of that thing. Right, can I finish this off with Hugh? I can! Continue Especially if Hugh gets a critical! Destroy them all. Okay. And I'm actually gonna go with Zealous Accusation so I can start wearing down the Oracle before his stealth wears off. 
fact, I, I got a bit of a plan. And it's irrelevant because he went first this turn, so his stealth is gone anyway. I was going to specifically keep the uh, Piranha alive so I could take him out with Hugh and or um, Zealous Accusation, but that isn't necessary anymore. You can still do it though. Press disadvantage. Give them no quarter. And room battle with treasure, because every room with treasure is also a battle. More fish and cultists. And they're just gonna miss everything. It's like, this is the game telling me, hey, listen, this isn't just your side that misses attacks. It happens to the enemy, too. Quakes. Judgment. So you can dodge divine intervention, but you can't dodge a knife. Okay. Obliterated. Well, let's go. Let's stick with the knife. Except it didn't do enough this time. Not enough the of the knife. Is broken. Maintain the offensive. Dizzying blow to body and brain. Unfortunately, I actually brought a corpse clearing ability this time. Okay, just down to the last piranha. Piranha are not exactly famous for the things they do all by themselves. They're famous for how they act in groups. And one more. <laughs> Gotta love the unnecessary critical. Right. These nightmarish creatures and can be light up the firewood, they can be feast, beaten. grab the rubies and the onyx. The rest can stay. Okay, sanctuary to uh, prevent nighttime ambush. I actually should have used zealous vigil. No, let's use zealous speech so that we have a stress buff. And I'm also going to use chant on the uh, leper. Which, since he's religious, he'll get further reduced in uh, stress intake. The and the stress levels struck. are zero now. A blazing star is born. Wait, I forgot. You actually have to click on things with the uh, antiquarian in order to find antiques. I've been doing it by reflex for so long that I forgot that that's something you actually have to do. Ow. Okay, there's Glorious at least one more room battle, but there could very easily be his just efficacy one. unwitnessed by his own eyes. I'll drop the three deeds for the stack of gold. And more scouting. It's another this is another way this mission has actually been rather generous, is we just get plenty of plenty of scouting all episode, really. Alright. Not just gonna heal the letter, he's in a bit of a bad way. Festering vapors to start wearing on the uh, madman. Eradicate. Okay. Chop and smite. That accus on the crusader of all the people to accuse, the you go for the crusader. Returns. Even the boldest gaze. Now for Doomsday, because we didn't have enough stress. Well, I mean, most of our stress levels are zero. I suppose we actually did not have enough stress from his perspective. I'm just gonna go for third as part of a larger plan. So we remove the corpse. We judge the oracle of the bad. Judge him. Very vindictive. And in addition to judging him, we also stab him. Just to add injury to the insult. Because I might be able to kill both of these with Zealous Accusations. Instead, I kill neither of them with Zealous Accusations. 
Oh, I suppose I'll have to wait for you then. Judgment on this guy. And you. Success so clearly in view. Or is it merely a trick of the light? I guess back into formation. And these medicinal herbs on the fish. I'll, I'll risk dropping the anti-venom. I only really need the anti-venom if we run into crimson cord enemies or spiders. And the blight inflicted by spiders is pretty minor. Okay, they're gonna make us go all the way to the end before we get to our last room battle, apparently. Though, that is kind of a good thing from my perspective, because it As gives the more opportunities purchase, to find, uh... Spirits are lifted, loot, and uh, find is made clear. Go for the Whoa, the big is knit. Also, our first encounter with bandits in the episode. I hadn't thought about that. This is their debut for this mission, for this episode. I was really hoping that would do slightly more damage, but I can finish the job with zealous accusation. I'm sure he's guilty of something. I just don't know the specifics. Diminished. Yeah, that blanket fire debuff is going to be a real problem. Put, uh, put the leper back together. He seems to be kind of falling apart a little bit. They have a plan. Inspire and cry. Because we want to manage stress anyway. Bandage and purge. And uh, you two uh, fusiliers that have just been pulled to the front line, you are what we conventionally refer to as bone. You might just want to run away now. I promise we won't chase you. Just keep healing the leper. And heal. And stab. And cake. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Okay, and into the unknown. Into the wild blue yonder or something like that. Okay. This could be our last room. Let's find out. It isn't. But more opportunities for antiques, and I have no reason to complain about that. Worth beyond measure, awarded to the brave and right, the fool. Everyone has extra alike. 500 gold, and we need the funding right now. Another mariner, another misfortune. But I guess there's been a surprising lack of combat, so far. and and another crusher. At least it's not a savage. We have the Vestal and the uh, Antiquarian team up to take out the Madman. And apparently the Madman is very good at evading Divine Intervention. Tidal Slam. At least it's not Arterial Pinch. And when both of its effects are resisted especially, it's not that big of a deal. Though, the weakness of the Uea Crusher pretty much is heroes with high resistances. Because its two abilities, both the majority of their damaging effects, require you to fail a resistance check. 
The arterial pinch, most of its damage is bleeding, which can be resisted, and uh, Tidal Slam, its main utility is the stun and knockback, which can be resisted. Are we sensing a theme here? Other than the theme of inaccuracy that we all apparently are bound by? Call of the Deep is not seen. That's good. There's a stab. One more solid hit and we're rid of the madman. But that's the end of him being poisoned, so I actually need to do five damage to him or something. Well, Judgment can do that. Okay, that's the. We got rid of the madman, now we just have to deal with the fish. And I may as well use Purge to get rid of the corpse. This way it will also cause some damage. And Holland just... Holland just refuses to be moved. He's been hit by Tidal Slam twice, and it has not managed either a stun or a move. The immovable Holland. You gonna make it three? He's gonna make it three. Holland the immovable. Champion falls. One more solid hit on the Oracle and he's done, too. So, Festering Vapors, if it deals two plus life... Oh, I only did one. You know what? I'm gonna take a bit of a risk. I'm not gonna attack him anymore. That means he gets one more action during which he could potentially cause significant problems. And in the meantime, I can use my stress-reducing abilities. Actually, never mind. That line might indicate that reinforcements will arrive next executed. turn. I can't risk that. This expedition at least promises success. And shovel open the oyster. We're still not out of uh, battles. I'm going to take a very large risk and drop the bandages for this batch of gold, since we have one room before we're at the end of the mission. And a map! And, okay, we do actually receive scouting, and there is a hallway battle here. Okay, use the medicinal herbs. There's no more, uh, yeah, there's, and I didn't need to drop them because I had room in my inventory for everything, but there's also nothing left on this map that could give us a reason to need them. Stingers are uh, a marginal problem. The main issue is that they're really evasive. But I think we can handle them. I say as I miss. Okay, that's one stinger. And and the wide mouth is almost is basically done. I need to hit him once with anything and he dies. And Holland, now he resists the debuff and the stun. Holland just continues to be immovable. And now I just keep wailing on the stinger until it dies, which will take a few turns probably. And there we go. <laughs> and I got a shoot tapestry. Triumphant pride precipitates a dizzying Okay, fall. I don't need to hold on to the shovels either so I can take the 600 gold. We found a jute tapestry, just apropos of nothing from a random hallway battle. That will never stop feeling weird to me that we get something that valuable just from random enemies. Sting the festival flavors for now. Chop has a decent chance to get rid of the gladiator in one. Not quite. But zealous accusation can make up the difference. Okay. Spear fishing, I think, can only displace you by one uh, space. So using spear fishing on Gale is kind of meaningless. 
Because if she and the uh, Antiquarian are forced to uh, switch places, that doesn't actually mess up my formation. The same thing if they were to successfully pull Holland forward. It wouldn't really that mean devastating it. blow. Sticking with healing for Gale. And chopping for uh, Vivian. Okay, the good news is they're down to one... Uh, they're down to one enemy that actually is going to be able to do anything. The bad news is that one enemy is in position four and there's a whole bunch of corpses. We're gonna need to fix this. You are really determined to pull Gale forward. Congratulations, you finally managed it. Now I have to ask you, was it worth it? Was it really worth it to put all of that effort into pulling the Vestal one space? Purge. And smite. Get one more solid hit again, and he's done. A little more. And I'll let the Antiquarian do the honors. But they did actually make us go all the way to the last English room cars. on the map. They had, this is, low and driven into I, the mud. I don't think this is a first. But this is pretty rare. I actually had to go to every hallway and every room on the entire map in order to complete the mission. Well, we got it. And absolutely no reason to continue adventuring. Let's return to the hamlet. At last, wholesome marine life can flourish. If indeed there is such a thing. Thirty-two thousand five hundred five. That's what happens when you bring an antiquarian and randomly get a shoot tapestry for no reason. Not as impressive of an heirloom haul, but I'm focusing a lot less on heirlooms since, frankly, gold is the limiting factor in our advancement a lot more often. In time, you will know the tragic extent of my failings. Let's get some disease treatment going. Gale has the Red Plague. I think she's the only one. Anyway, we've defeated a boss, we collected some shards, and we even managed to get some experience for some of the newbies. But, with all that completed, this is going to be the end for this episode. Thank you all for watching, I love you all, and I will see you next time.